Would you drive your car after having a couple of Mai Tais or a few Singapore slings? Most of you, I hope, would probably say, come on, absolutely not. Okay, well, let me ask you this. Have you ever driven yourself somewhere after a bad night's sleep? Well, the evidence is increasingly clear that the effects of sleep deprivation may be similar to those brought on by consuming alcohol. Yikes. Driving-related considerations aside, suboptimal sleep has been shown to influence many other negative health, social, and financial outcomes. If sleep is important to quality of life, maybe much more so than we had previously imagined, let's consider how tech may help us to improve it. Let's look at our sleep masks, our headbands, our rings and our watches, our sheets, and our temperature-regulating mattress covers. Yes, it is a thing. Never mind all that hullabaloo about poor sleeping blowing up your life, because you sleep pretty well, right? Well, perhaps not, my friend. According to CDC, one in three Americans don't get enough sleep. We spoke to Professor Trisha Andrew, who gives us the lowdown on our different sleep stages and why they're important. In terms of sleep stages, uh, there are roughly four stages or five. Wake is a stage of sleep, so wake, light sleep, intermediate sleep, deep sleep, and rapid eye movement or REM sleep. Deep sleep, however, which is the only physiologically restorative phase of sleep. This is when you basically wake up and say, oh, I had a really great sleep. That is correlated with this phase called deep sleep. It has very low frequency brain waves. And physiologically, it turns out, amazingly, this sleep phase is when your body and your spinal fluids actually flush out your brain your brain tissue. And it is this deep sleep phase that is correlated with brain health and particularly correlated with preventing early onset or onset of beta amyloid plaques and various associated diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. In short, low frequency delta waves equals deep sleep. And deep sleep equals waking up in the morning feeling, well, offensively amazing. Kind of like you've been cast in a discount hotel chain commercial from the 1990s. So how do we know whether we're sleeping well? It's true that some of us already know that our sleep is trash. Shout out to the parents with little kids. However, for others, it may be less obvious if we're getting crappy sleep. For many of us, tracking our sleep is a foundational step on the road to improving it. If you've had these things clinically tested at a lab before, you're likely familiar with polysomnography, a sleep study that records your brain waves, heart rate, breathing, blood oxygen level, as well as eye and leg movement. To measure and capture all of these things, many wires are required. Many, many wires. Invented in the late 50s before becoming routine by the 1970s, polysomnography remains the gold standard for comprehensively assessing a person's sleep. However, not all of us can access an in-lab sleep test and while well, many of us probably don't want to. Enter consumer sleep tech. The wearable tech that we enjoy today may have originated about 15 years ago with the Zeo Personal Sleep Manager, one of the first such devices available to the public. Introduced in 2009, the Zeo used a headband to allow users to track and assess their sleep in the comfort of their own beds. Despite its many flaws, ranging from complaints of headaches to red blotches caused by its skull-crushing headband, the unit likely helped kickstart the global sleep tech market, which is projected to grow from an already staggering $17.2 billion in 2022 to nearly $70 billion by 2030. So what's out there for us? There are a few buckets of products to consider. First, we have the popular wearables category, which includes watches, wrists or headbands, rings, and even garment-integrated systems. Lower tech products in this category include sleep masks and blue light filtering glasses. Second, we have room-related ambience tech, blackout blinds, sound machines, integrated sunrise alarms like Amazon's Halo Rise, et cetera, et cetera. Finally, in our third bucket, we have bed and mattress-related products, from high-tech body temperature regulating mattress covers to simpler solutions like cooling sheets, weighted blankets, and so on. These technologies track, evaluate, or modify our modern environments to create optimal sleep conditions. While products like the super cool 8 Sleep Pod 3, a high-tech mattress cover that regulates body temperature, are worth exploring, its $3,000 price tag will likely incentivize most consumers to try some lower-cost products first. The most popular products remain wearables, which promise to track sleep and evaluate its quality. Products like the Aura Ring, Whoop, and even Fitbits and Apple Watches. The convenience is unparalleled. 
but how well can a ring or wristband replace a clinical sleep lab? The biggest problem with those is that the basic determinant, the clinical classification of sleep is performed by measuring brain activity using a technique called electroencephalography or EEG. But your sleep phases are textbook classified using your brain signals. You can't get brain signals on your finger. So the most commercially accessible devices simply infer sleep stages using things that you can measure from your wrist or finger, which include your blood pulse wave, blood oxygenation, heart rate, skin temperature, and maybe even any movements that you have. So in summary, right now, roughly speaking, the accuracy of most of the finger and wrist worn trackers is about 60 to 65%. And this is where the accuracy or lack thereof of commercial devices really becomes important because None of the devices on the market right now actually measure deep sleep. It becomes really funny because you can obsess about your sleep and I think that's a fair thing to do, but we actually don't have any trackers that allow you to accurately quantify that. This is why some users report that their wristband trackers think that they're sleeping when actually they're just watching Netflix. Tracking these indirect measures may give us some idea of how well we're sleeping, but they're not capable of telling us the whole story just yet. Are we on a path to being able to accurately quantify deep sleep at home? Well, Trisha has some thoughts. One of the things that I'm really proud about uh, of our sleep mask uh, that we call the Phi Mask is that our Phi Mask actually allows for very clinically accurate and comfortable recording of electroencephalography or EEG signals or the brain activity over a full eight hours worth of sleep. We actually could record it with the same clinical accuracy as the clinical instrument that is used in sleep facilities, which is called the polysomnograph or polysomnography system. Uh, we can match its accuracy, but it's just a online purchased uh, sleep mask that you that people wear to block out light during sleep. And we put on our fabric electrodes onto that thing and get clinically accurate uh, EEG signals, thus allowing for not only deep sleep monitoring or recording, but also accurate depiction of how long someone lasts in that phase over uh, one night's sleep. Our masks are meant for any lay user to buy instead of, again, a finger or wrist worn tracker and simply put it on their face and um, have a decent night's sleep with you know, perhaps the added benefit of light blocking. So as our understanding of sleep continues to evolve and consumer tech along with it, we appear to be getting very close to having access to a sleep lab in our homes and perhaps at a price that consumers can actually manage. While there are some incredible products out there that can give us a decent idea of how well we're sleeping, we may wish to exercise some caution in interpreting those results. Either way, as this tech continues to evolve, it's not something we're gonna wanna sleep on. Do you love tracking your sleep? Let us know in the comments below. I'm Kate, thank you so much for watching, and hey, hope you have a great sleep tonight.